that our country faces an apocalypse. It has been a crisis that will disrupt this country forever. The book of Revelations talk about it. The horsemen of our apocalypse are the men in our cabin. Too many wrong things are being done in this country in your name. But they say that if Erebar was not dead before, they killed him now. <laughs> and and, and I, I mean that in no, in no facetious sense. Because I ask you, what is the prosperity and the progress of Barbados built on? It is not built on our possession of oil. It has not been built on bauxite. It has not been built on industrial riches, not agricultural surpluses. It has been built on the skills of our people. And I ask you, why have businesses come here rather than go elsewhere in the Caribbean? And what has distinguished us and differentiated us from the rest of the world? Education of our people. But there's another little aspect to this that needs to be spoken about. The government of Barbados owes the University of the West Indies about $200 million. I will not pay them. Not in my name. The University of the West Indies is not a government department. The University of the West Indies is a regional institution that is performing a service Namely, educating our children for which it has to be paid. And the government of Barbados says independence. We have taken a pride. Taken a pride in being able to tell the rest of the world that we live in a country that is unlike other bandit countries, other places in the rest of the world. That we are in other places in the rest of the world that there are governments that don't pay the bills. But that we in Barbados used to take a pride that we are owed, we paid. The government owes the university $200 million for educating the children of Barbados. It has a duty. It has a duty in my name and your name to pay for the education of the children of this country. And what a, there is no explanation that can suffice. It is wrong. It is evil. It is wicked for the government to owe the university and not to pay. Bad policies can be good politics. The Democratic Labour Party knew what it was doing was wrong, but for the sake of cheap political advantage, it continued to deepen and deepen and deepen the wrong things that it was doing. And you know what was the worst thing that has ever happened in this country? A minister of finance called Chris Sinclair says that he had to borrow to pay the wages of 7,000 civil servants. So what was his solution? Tell Dennis Lowe to pay on more. Tell Michael Lashley to pay on more. That is why we are in this sad and sorry state today. And while they were doing this, he was accusing me and the Barbados Labour Party of having a secret plan to lay off 10,000 people playing upon people fair. This is wrong. It is wickedness. It is evil. And the only thing that will allow for the time of wickedness like this is for good people to do nothing. And tonight, therefore, I am not here because it is about me. It is well with my soul. 
I am not here because it is about me and Motley or the Barbados Saber Party. I am here because and I'm pleased to be part of this platform of the Barbados Saber Party to tell you and to say to you that it is time that we take a stand. It is time, Barbados, that we take back our country. It is time that we take back, take a stand against lawlessness. For five years, for five years, people in this country were prepared to wink at a government that was prepared to practice lawlessness. You know that you do not have the right to make the transport board send gasoline, but break the law. You know that they cannot have an executive chairman at the water authority, but break the law. I mean, countries allow lawless governments to function as lawless governments. You invite the kind of apocalypse that now face the people of Barbados. Saw something this part last Thursday. Saw something this Parliament that I thought I would never, ever, ever see in my life as a parliamentarian. A government sneak into our Parliament in the wee hours of the morning behind the people back to raise a billion dollars. That your children and my children and your grandchildren and my grandchildren will have to pay. But in the dead of night, a government prostrate by its own actions, sneaking into a parliament behind the people back to raise a billion dollars in new debt to do what with. And it is not just about the economy, it is about you. It is about you. There are some of you, like 99% of Barbadians, who are living paycheck to paycheck. There are some of you who are working at the gymnasium, National Training Board, Sports Council, and you do not know what will face you in the next few months. There are single mothers in Barbados who were depending on that $1,300. Even before they got the money, the money wasn't spent, it was infested in the welfare of their children. And there are some poor families that my father and mother who thought that they were living in a country that would give their children the chance to escape from poverty. But the people collectively saying that the most important thing is the education of our children. And no matter what it takes, we will educate our children. And for them, what was the Barbados dream has become a personal nightmare. Was it not the case that a governor of the Central Bank was telling you until a few days ago that this country was stable? That there were no policies, alternative to the policies that were being pursued? Why are you now, as a free and intelligent people, now to accept the alternative policies that the government is sent to bite said? There was no need for. It is time, Barbados, to take a stand against political tribalism. Because Barbados is in this sad and sorry mess. Because the Democratic Labour Party has asked each and every one of you to pay for its partisan political program. You know, the Democrat Labour Party is asking for you to sacrifice. Give up your reverse tax credit. 
but the only thing that is not to be cut is all of the programs that the Democratic Labour Party believes that it must rest its political success on. My cousin here is the Ben. I'm told that he's made a little money now from a summer camp. And even as the Democratic Labour Party is telling you, the poor people, how much you have to suffer. We continue to see the ads on television. The David Thompson Memorial Football Competition. And the constituency councils are the only institution in this country that will continue to escape the savagery of the cuts that is this, this wicked government. This is wickedness. And it is wickedness when a party asks the rest of the society to bear these heavy sacrifices by the party itself. The party itself intends to continue to feed on the fatty calf.